Fino, AYS Sports. How are you doing tonight? Hi, Blake. So nice to hear from you. You I'm, too. If I'm being honest, I'm completely exhausted. <laughs> um, like, if I told you what my last week's been like, it wouldn't even make sense. But what, what's, happy to talk to you. Awesome. We're glad to bring you on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good show. We got, already got some breaking news during the show. LSU's O-line coach is out. Paul Maneri's retiring. Coach K's retiring. It's just a big day in sports. Kaylee, and, and so we got we got a lot to talk about. I greatly appreciate, Let's as I mentioned, you uh, you joining the show. One thing I want to uh, just start off with you here is that you were someone that's covered Coach Paul Maneri. You got a lot of Baton Rouge ties. When you heard that he was retiring last Friday, what was your first thoughts when you heard the news? It's just an end of an era, right? LSU has had the unbelievable fortune of having legends coach them and win national championships for the Tigers baseball team. And how do you replace him? Where do you go? I'm just glad Scott Woodward is the athletic director, and I know he's going to make an incredible hire, but it's just a new chapter. Mm -hmm. You know, and it is, and he was kind of the the person, Kaylee, that 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 – closed the bridge between skip everybody wanted the program a baseball program to to get back to the prestige that it was and he was one of those guys that that really brought lsu back there um when you when you see a lot of these great coaches that are retiring uh roy williams coach k paul maneri do you think that sports in general is just going through a wave in a new era with all these legendary coaches uh, uh calling it quits at the end of the seasons uh that we've seen now yeah, I do think it's an interesting moment in sports right now, I think particularly in college sports. I mean, sure, you saw the Brad Stevens news today with the Celtics, and right. that's a whole other topic, but, but I do think it's this interesting time, right, where there are these guys who have been in these positions and created legacies and have coaching trees beneath them, and now it's time for the next generation, so to speak, to step up. But, but personally, what it makes me feel is, is just farther away from a period of my life personally that I enjoyed tremendously getting to cover some of these incredible coaches. And I'm sad for it just because I like cheering for the people who were nice to me. Right? right. And now that I no longer work for ESPN and now that I no longer am on the sidelines getting to witness the real impact that these great coaches have on their players and how they build their programs and the lessons they teach and the, the men that they're developing, not just to be great players, but to be great, great men. Um, I'm just sad that I'll feel less close to college sports with the retirement of some of these greats. Absolutely. And you know, the first thing that uh, the people down here in the Bayou and Baton Rouge were wondering is all these legendary coaches are retiring. When is Nick Saban going to pick up that mantle, right? <laughs> when is he going to, when is he going <laughs> to retire and call it quits? I think that's what everybody in the Bayou is wondering. Uh, Kayla Hartong, ABC correspondent is our guest. Uh, Kaylee, something that was interesting to me in, in, in covering your career and watching you, uh, a guy that you spent some time with was coach Ed Orgeron and, you know, seeing him walk around the building saying, hold that tiger. When when you've seen him and covered him, what was something interesting that you picked up on that fans don't normally see? I love that Coach O is exactly who you want him to be, right? Like any image that a fan has of who he is and what he's like walking around football ops at LSU. <laughs> like he's actually that guy. He's actually walking up and down the hall. You said it, yelling, hold that tiger. And he's dead serious about it. You know, I got to be around Ed at a really interesting time for him. I worked the first game where he was the interim head coach for LSU. And I worked his first game where he was the head coach for LSU. And just to see the pure joy that earning that job gave him mm. and how much it meant to him, you know, to be a son of South Louisiana, like for you and I, that's not lost on us, right? right? That this is right. the perfect school at the perfect moment for him. And thank God he got that perfect season because nobody can ever take that away from him. And I don't know that that season would have been what it was without him. And I don't know that that season will live in the special place it will hold in LSU football fans' hearts forever if it wasn't for him. 
Yeah, and that's interesting because, you know, as a kid or, or, or somebody from our state, we always grow up wanting to be that prestigious figure at LSU, wanting to always show pride. We're very prideful people, and he's able to embody what we've always wanted to do. Uh, was there something that during that magical season that that you saw that you thought that maybe should have been chronicalized or talked about more that that maybe wasn't and that you that always sticks out to you in that in that perfect season in 19 I mean of course the offense was the story of the season right and right. Joe Brady has become a great friend of mine and I will give that guy all the credit he deserves but I just hope that the casual fan recognizes how much credit Steven Smigger deserves for what right. happened in that season you know he was a real teacher to Joe and Joe is always the first one to give credit where credit is due but there was also such a great staff there right like I'm so glad to see DJ now back in a role where right. he was so integral behind the scenes to the work that was going and people didn't know DJ Mangus's name now they do now they will because those guys all worked so cohesively I mean he and Joe go back to to being college buddies I mean, the first night I met both of them, I met them together. And, and it and it was before that season started. It was when they just got into Baton Rouge and they were wide eyed and they were excited. And I was excited for them. But the way everyone worked together and contributed to that greatness is what should not be lost on anyone. Absolutely. And, and, and something interesting about just the storylines and everything that happened in that season. And then all of a sudden, COVID. And then the complete 180 happens, and now we're as we're Ugh. getting closer back to normal. It's going to be interesting, interesting to see how how that happens. A little off the LSU beaten path, Kaylee. I got to ask you this: Is there one person in sports? Is there one person that you cover? Maybe not even in sports, or that you've talked to that it was like maybe your your funnest moment, your favorite moment that you can recall. That when someone asks you, "Hey, Kaylee, who was your favorite interview? What was your favorite story?" Is, is there something that comes to mind when, when someone asks you that question? I mean, there's nothing I love more in covering sports than getting to cover LSU. You right. know, I always say I came at that job as a fan first because I was born and raised in Baton Rouge because my mom worked for the Athletic Foundation because I grew up around the programs. You know, Shaq was the first athlete I ever knew existed. And mm -hmm. I legitimately thought he was superhuman as I was like, three, four years old going to my first LSU basketball games in my little LSU cheerleading outfit, you know, and, and then I, I got to witness the greatness of LSU baseball through the nineties. And then of course being an LSU football fan. So there was nothing more fun for me covering sports and going home and actually getting to cover the team that I love to cheer for. Because at the end of the day, talking about sports is talking about passion mm -hmm. that the players have to play the game that the fans have to support the team they love and to watch the game and to just get to be a small part of the memories that people could have from moments that would bring them so much joy and nothing would make me happier. I mean, I just, I always took my job as a sports reporter as such an honor because I got to be a part of the best moments in people's lives. Right. And whether or not they remembered me being there, knowing that I got to witness moments that, that guys had worked their whole lives for up to that point for, that wasn't lost on me. That I might get to be the first person to really ask them to process an incredible victory. Like, how cool is that? Right. So my, my, my short answer is literally any moment that involved covering LSU sports was, was my favorite. And it, and it was funny when, when you reached out to me and asked to chat after Coach Maneri's <laughs> announcement, it really got me thinking about the fact that the first LSU sporting event I ever got to cover with an ESPN microphone in my hand was a 2013 Super Regional for LSU baseball against Oklahoma. And it brought back just some great memories of one of my favorite teams I've ever gotten to cover. But the emotions I felt stepping onto the field, right, at Alex Box Stadium, like, oh, my gosh. I mean, Colin right. Baton Rouge comes on, and I'm like – Telling the director in the microphone, like, don't come to me. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm singing along. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, and what's crazy, Kaylee, is all the great, uh, the greats that were on that team, and Coach Paul Maneri, who was always just so great, 
to the media, right? Like always just time, always took time out of his way to talk and knew you by your first name, which someone calls me Blake as a coach like that. Like, you, you know how that, at least to me, it makes you feel like he knows who you are, that, that he, he respects what it is that you do. Uh, you talk about that 2013 team and that being the first time you covered Aaron Nola was on that team. He was a sophomore. Uh, oh my God! That that, that must have been one hell. Team. Right, that must have been a hell of a season. Is there something that you remember from that from that team that always as being that that first time doing it that you remember vividly? Oh <laughs> yeah, I remember Alex Bregman Swagger. That kid had <laughs> right, just, he was like seventeen and he'd just been named freshman of the year. And, you know, it's always a funny position for me to be in as I'm meeting college athletes for the first time and I'm, you know, considerably older than them. Um, and, and you get to have these interactions where you can tell a lot about the, the person they are, the confidence they have and what that may translate to on the field. And I knew right away. I mean, from my very first interaction with Alex Bregman, I was like, this kid's got it. Like, he's just got it. He's got that X factor that is going to propel him to whatever he wants to do. But the other thing that I love about that team, I love the seniors on that team. I mean, right. Mason Katz and Ray Rhymes, oh, my gosh. Those guys were such great leaders, and their love for the program and for the guys around them. God, I wanted them to win Omaha so badly that year. Right. Um, uh, that, just, that just broke my heart when they went two and out. I did not see that coming. But um, those were guys that really just loved, loved the team, loved the program, cared about the legacy, cared about how their team would be remembered and what their contributions would mean to a program that was bigger than them. And they really embodied so much of what I think it, LSU fans love about LSU baseball. You know, Kayla, you bring up something interesting in reference to, you know, we thought that that team was going to be able to take it. I mean, uh, close to a 50-win team. Uh, a very prestigious team. Rafe Rhymes hitting over 400. I mean, a guy that went to Eunice and then came back after Paul told him he wasn't good enough, and then he comes back. I mean, that, that team had so many different storylines that to cover. Uh, Paul, in his in his press conference, talked about that he hopes or that he wishes that he made Skip Bertman proud. I've been on local TV shows and radio stations, and, and I'm going to give you the floor here on this one, too. Do you think, and being in Baton Rouge, growing up in Baton Rouge, is, is Paul Maneri maybe behind Skip the biggest uh, LSU coach that we've ever that's ever graced LSU athletics? I mean, if you're counting national championships in the modern era, right? Right? Like he's he's up there. I mean, I don't think there's any denying that he made Skip Bertman proud. I mean, Skip Bertman will be the first one to tell you that Paul Maneri <laughs> made him proud, right? But I don't think that that anybody to doubt that. But again, that's what makes Coach Maneri so great is that that was his goal, knowing that he was following in the footsteps of a legend and just wanting to make that, that man proud and continue the tradition of excellence, you know, to live up to the expectations fans have in a place where we know our expectations are totally unrealistic. Right. But, um, mm. but he, he, he wanted, he wanted to honor that. And I, and I think he did a great job and he, you know, I mean, my mark of a great coach is not just quantified by national championships. My mark of a great coach are the ones who really take on the responsibility of developing the young players they need into men, men who will go into the world and do more than just play a sport. And that's who Paul Maneri is. He took his job as a coach so much more seriously than just winning championships. Obviously, he knew that was important, and he wanted to do it as much as anybody. But like Kramer Robertson, it, mm. it, it will be right. one to attest to Paul Maneri being a guy who really turned, as <laughs> Kim Mulkey said it in her in her introductory <laughs> press conference, right? right? Turned a cocky little boy into a man, right? Something like that. Mm. But that that's that's how I measure a great coach. Kaylee, last question. I'll get you out of here, and it's not sports related, but I did see this, and. Uh, it kind of it kind of made me uh, really want to do it, and, and I kind of envied you on this one. Uh, you were oh you were at, at or at Disneyland for the reopening, being one of the first people <laughs> there and there in the reopening. How magical, literally and puns intended, was it to be there for the reopening when Disneyland was back? So magical, like just as magical as you want it to be. And I've got to tell you where I am right now. 
I'm at Disneyland right now. I'm. At, Are you? I'm See, at, we did. Hey, Kaylee, not to rudely I, interrupt you. We didn't. We didn't put that together. We didn't even talk about that. So, just the people, we didn't talk about that. This is just something I saw. So, let me top being here for the reopening of Disneyland after 15 months of being closed. I today got to go behind the scenes for a sneak peek of the new Avengers campus oh. at Disney California Adventure Park, which opens on Friday. And if you want to talk about cool, I mean, the stuff these Imagineers, as Disney likes to call, you know, they're creative. The stuff these folks came up with, man. I mean, technology, innovation, it is truly a fully immersive experience in this new Avengers campus. And pretty soon here, June 15th, you know, Disneyland's open up to people outside of California. You know, right now it's only California residents who've been able to come. But anybody who's coming for the LSU UCLA game, Derek Panansky, I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> bring your family, bring your kids. <laughs> Derek was hitting me up. And Derek was hitting me up when I was here for the opening, being like, so when are they going to start letting other people in? <laughs> yes, I mean, UCLA game, like, we want to go. We, we got to go. So. <laughs> Absolutely. I so, can see that happening. I'm telling you, this is worth this is worth checking out. Kaylee, you've been absolutely fantastic and talking to us about Paul Maneri and everything that you do. I know that everybody in Louisiana knows knows you and where to follow you, but just in case it's their first time, just in case, where can they follow you and everything great that you guys are doing? Well, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Kaylee Hartung, and you can watch Good Morning America every morning um, or World News Tonight in the evening, and you'll see me there. I got to tell you very, a very quick story. There was a purse on Good Morning America. There was that little sale that they do, and uh, my wife got one of those purses. I got to be honest. I, wa I wait at the end for Good Morning America when they do those sales because I got to get the brownie points <laughs> with the wife, right? Like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do it. The swag, the, the, it's called the swag bag, right? Like I had to purchase this. It's a swag bag. So I got to tell you, I, I did that a couple a uh, couple months ago, and it got me some brownie points, Kaylee. <laughs> good job. See, all sorts of good things can come from watching Good Morning America. Absolutely. Tell your friends. Absolutely. Well, thank you again.